The top headlines, Defense War College hosts a workshop to showcase its progress and challenges. And Ethiopia secures over $1.4 billion from coffee sector. Hello and welcome to ABC World, the voice of Pan-Africanism. I'm Hikma Tamam with the news for the hour. Do stay with us. Ethiopia has called for early agreements on a legally binding instrument to assure non-nuclear weapon states against the use or threats of nuclear weapons. The second session of the Preparatory Committee for the 2026 Review Conference of the Parties to the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons commenced on July 22 at the United Nations headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. On the second day of the general debate, the permanent mission of Ethiopia in Geneva, represented by the Sanawak Gorfu delivered a statement reaffirming its support for complete nuclear disarmament. The Sanawak emphasized that the NPT is the cornerstone of nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation, stressing the urgent need for the total, irreversible and legally binding elimination of nuclear weapons. He highlighted Ethiopia's commitment to these principles and called for an early agreement on a legally binding instrument to assure non-nuclear weapon states against the use or threats of nuclear weapons weapons. Ethiopian Airlines Group's world-class maintenance and training provider Ethiopian MRO and ATR, the world's number one regional aircraft manufacturer, announced the signature of a letter of intent aimed, aimed at developing Ethiopian MRO's ATR aircraft maintenance and training capabilities. During the signing ceremony, Ms. Fintaso Bekela, Ethiopian Airlines Group's chief executive officer, say that the partnership aligns with Ethiopian Airlines Group vision to become a leading aviation reference for the African continent and the Middle East. An official press release from ATR confirmed that the cooperation would cover the development of Ethiopian MRO's maintenance capabilities for ATR aircraft types and the establishment of a local spares stock to reduce the response time for ATR operators in the region. On her part, Natalie Tarnod Lode, ATR's chief executive officer, said Ethiopian MRO significant investments over the past years to expand their facilities, combined with their dedication to developing their capabilities, present a timely opportunity for ATR to provide better support to African and Middle East operators. And in business news, a deputy head of mission at the Ethiopian Embassy in New Delhi, Buzunesh Meseret, took part in India-Africa Business Conclave 2024 second edition, which was held in Ahmedabad city, Gujarat state, India. On the occasion, Buzunesh delivered a presentation on the Ethiopian business and investment opportunities with a special focus on priority sectors such as agriculture and agro-processing, manufacturing, ICT, mining and tourism. She also elaborated market access, land, labor, forest specialized economic zones, integrated infrastructure, fiscal and non-fiscal incentives, economic reforms including privatization and liberalization of financial and telecom sectors as favorable economic factors of the burgeoning investment in her country. Ambassador Buzunesh also extended an invitation to Indian companies to explore the enticing investment opportunities in Ethiopia. It was stated that the Ethiopian Embassy and GIBF have agreed to further collaborate in promoting Ethiopian business and investment opportunities. Modern humans or originated in Ethiopia means that everybody evolved from this ancient populations that lived in what is now Ethiopia about 150, 160,000 years ago. Those are the populations that spread to the rest of Africa before they went out of Africa, right? So basically, 
you can say that you know modern humans originated in Africa definitely there's no question about that but once they showed up as modern humans they've spread to different parts of Africa in the end yes everybody can say we're all Ethiopians we're all Africans that's like no doubt no, nobody doubts that every human being that lives on every corner of the world they trace their origins to Africa if you want to be specific then of course they trace their origins back to Ethiopia We're back from the short break. Despite pressing factor at Red Sea route, Ethiopia is able to earn $1.43 billion from the coffee sector for the first time in its history in, its, in this Ethiopian fiscal year. Talking to EBC Director General at Ethiopian Tea and Coffee Authority at Dunia Debela, underlined illegal smugglers among one of the challenges encountered by coffee producing country. Tegister Nisa has sat with the Director General. Take a look. Ethiopia has been Africa's largest coffee producer and the world's fifth largest exporter of Arabica coffee. Coffee is Ethiopia's number one source of export revenue generating about 30 to 35 percent of the country's total export earnings. Approached by ABC Director General at Ethiopian Coffee and Tea Authority, Dr. Artunya Devel underlined that though facing challenges at Red Sea Route, the country was able to earn a revenue of 1.43 billion US dollar for the first time in its history in this Ethiopian physical year. By exporting this amount in this all uh, hardest and also programs and the challenge, we got about 1.43 billion uh, USD. This is the maximum uh, record high in, uh, in Ethiopian coffee export history. So uh, for this performance, we call it the, the marketing structure or the marketing option called the vertical integration contributed to more than 90% of this uh, was contributed by this market option. The challenges encountered by coffee producing country, he says, includes illegal smugglers. What makes Ethiopia very different from any other coffee producing country is that Ethiopia is also consuming coffee very hugely. And the domestic consumption uh, competes always with the export. And there is sometimes the price of coffee in the country is quite high as compared to the international price. So uh, this, will open, this has already opened. Uh, door for smugglers and for those who are non illegal or Ill illegal coffee export uh, traders. This is one of the challenges that we are actually experiencing in the coffee uh, marketing system. And uh, uh, at the same time, the quality decreases because these people they don't want to export a very good quality. They want to ex get a, a higher prices by selling coffee as a local market. But because of the number of, challenge, of uh, reforms that we have done in uh, marketing system, for us, the commercial percentage of coffee that we export the last two to three years is about 70 percent, whereas the specialty is about 30 percent. But this time, the specialty percentage increased to 60 percent, whereas the commercial percent, that means the low-grade coffee decreased to uh, 40 percent. We are keeping on doing that and improving the, the quality of the coffee. The Director General further indicated that adding value is another challenge a certain coffee exporting country would face. So uh, adding value by roasting or grinding coffee and then exporting to the international market is really not a simple task because uh, we cannot penetrate the already existing market over there because the coffee buyers who are buying or the huge coffee buyers who are buying Ethiopian coffee they need to buy the raw coffee rather than roasted coffee because uh, Ethiopia coffee is having a very good quality coffee and then they mix with that of Brazil or Colombia and then improve the quality of those coffee. So they need the raw coffee in order to do so. But if you export roasted and ground coffee, there is no any market opportunity and market window for us. So the, the only opportunities that we have, we need to have a joint venture approach we investor over there, overseas, and the investor here in the country must have to have or join hands in order to just conduct this kind of market relationship. Otherwise, it's quite really uh, difficult to really penetrate and export directly coffee from roasted coffee from Ethiopia to elsewhere in the world. We have already created a very enabling environment, like for example, uh, creating uh, directives as, and as well as regulations, and the uh, coffee exporter they can also have a chance to sell coffee here in the country using foreign currency. Adunya also called on stakeholders in coffee value chain to come in unison to generate even much more revenue. 
The Infantry Defense War College recently hosted a workshop to showcase its progress and challenges since its establishment in 2019. Commander-in-Chief Brigadier General Bulti Taddesa highlighted the college's key role in training strategic leaders for the Ethiopian Defense Forces, contributing to the nation's diplomacy through training military leaders from neighboring countries and bolstering regional security through its educational offerings. The college provides comprehensive education and security studies, military leadership, joint operations, and strategic strategic thinking. It also conducts research, offers short-term training programs, and organizes workshops and symposiums on strategic security issues. The workshop's guest of honor, Lieutenant General Desta Abiche of the Defense Engineering Command, praised the War College as a crucial institution fostering military professionalism and influential leadership. He underscored its vital role in Ethiopia's mission to build a modern and effective military force, with an ambition goal of becoming Africa's leading center of excellence in strategic security by 2033, the Federal Defense War College continues to play a pivotal role in strengthening Ethiopia's defense capabilities and regional security posture. It was learned. Oxford Policy Management has launched a data and evidence to end extreme poverty funding initiative which aims to end extreme poverty in Ethiopia over the next seven years. The initiative focuses on empowering national researchers and analysts to develop and implement small and medium-sized research projects that generate critical insights, enhancing national strategies, policies and programs to combat poverty and vulnerability. Mich Michael Adino, the country director for Ethiopia, stated that this initiative will support Ethiopia's efforts to eradicate poverty. The Ethiopian has made a significant stride in poverty reduction measures in past few decades. But they still face some challenge due to various shocks. We hope the Deep Challenge Fund to assist and address some of those issues, filling the critical evidence gap and promoting sustainable development. The Deep Challenge Fund builds on a previous engagement workshop focusing on identifying most pressing research in this field. We have an exciting agenda ahead that includes some insights from our deep work in Tanzania, unveiling some evidence gap that been he invited local researchers to participate in the program, emphasizing that collaboration is key to its success. Take a look. I encourage all Ethiopian researchers to submit their proposal that will advance not only our understanding on poverty, but influence the national policy. Collaboration is key, and we welcome partnership to ensure our efforts in inclusive and impactful work. At Oxford Policy Management, we provide a broader range of services in health, social protection, education, governance, climate and resilience, and, and research and evidence areas. I look forward to continue our engagement, leveraging our experience to develop an evidence-based policy and strengthen institutional capacity to maximize impact in this uh, to maximize impact in the development initiative across Ethiopia finally now a recap of the top stories once again defense war college hosts a workshop to showcase its progress and challenges And Ethiopia secures over $1.4 billion from coffee sector. Well, that's it for now. You have been watching ABC World, the voice of Pan-Africanism. I'm Sikma Tamam with Denise for the hour. Do stay tuned in with more programs of ABC World.